Scott Sisson will kick off. Booms it and far over to one side. And Hastings over there on the three-yard line to the 10 of the 15. Goes to the sideline, tries to follow the blockers, and they spin him out around the 30. And the dogs will bring it out around the 30. Kevin Peoples, a strong safety, a backup, was the guy that spun him out. Dixie Crystal Sugar scoreboard. Texas 21, Texas A&M 14. They are in the third. Bandy 7, Tennessee 7. That might be the end of the first by now. Georgia Southern in the playoffs had an 11-point lead at the half, 21 to 10 on Idaho. Georgia's ball in their own 31. Dupree's still a quarterback. We're in an eye. He fakes, he bootlegs left. The defense coming after him. He stops, he tries to run straight ahead, and they knock him down behind the line. Hummings had gone very deep down that side. The tight end was short down the left side and was open around a 45, but he had pressure on him. Clary and Coleman, the tackle on the linebacker, got him. Big Kevin Battle, a giant nose guard, 6'5 and 295, just limped off the field for Tech. Big Kevin Battle, a giant sophomore nose guard, had to come out. The loss was only a yard. They put it back on the 30. Georgia second and 11. They're 11 points down. Alfonso Ellis in motion. Dupree fires. It is complete to Moore, the walk-on up on the 42. Steve Moore, the kid from Cartersville. Ken Swilling, the free safety, hit him right away. And the play gained about 12, 12 and a half yards in a first down. The dogs threw it relatively short and in the middle. Moore is the one that dropped a long bomb that would have been a touchdown. Earlier, they overthrew him. He caught two in the junior varsity game for long bombs. First down, dogs on their own 42 and a half. Long time since they had a first down. They're in an eye slot. Maxwell in motion. Tech comes up into a five-man line, and they run to Alfonso Ellis. He blows up the middle for five or six. Tripped by Jarrell Williams, who's made a lot of tackles today for Tech. A kid out of Orangeburg, South Carolina. Tripped him from behind. Up on the 48. Give him five. Second down. It's clouded over here a little. Tech leading by 11, 23 to 12. Georgia led 9 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. Led 6 to nothing very early. Really had the stadium and the crowd going with them, and Tech took over in the second. Tech in a five-man front. Hastings in motion. Dupree handoff to Hurst, trying to cut back in the middle. They met him on the 50 and just drove him back three yards. But he got about two or so. Hurst tried to go in there, and they broke the wall down on him. Clary the tackle. Jarrell Williams, the linebacker, hit him. And the ball will be third down and two and a half. Georgia has come out to their 50. They're going to change the running back, put Larry Ware in. They've taken Hurst out. Ware and Alfonso Ellis, the back's got a slot left. They need two and a half yards. Tech is up in a six now. Maxwell in motion. They go back to a five, a toss sweep to Ware. Try to get a block, and he fumbled. And Tech is going to recover back on the Georgia side of the 50. Ware got hit so hard as he dove over for about a four-yard gain. The ball popped in the air behind him. Jarrell Williams recovered the linebacker. The Dogs would have had a first down on the Tech 47. But Tech's got a first down on the Georgia 48. And now let's see if the Jackets can strike suddenly as they started doing with quickness in the second quarter. They lead 23 to 12. Boy, did he fumble. That ball just flew out in the air. Tech on the Georgia 48. They run a man in motion and flop him. Sean Jones option. Pitches back to Bell. I got in trouble behind the line. Three or four red shirts hit him for no gain. The pitch was not true to him. Mitch Davis, a linebacker, led the charge up in there. Eric Coney had come across. It'll be second down. Tech on the Georgia 48, 23 to 12. Tech by 11. If I get anything else on Bandy in Tennessee or Texas and Texas A&M, I'll give them to you. Florida game is later on. John Jones back to pass for Tech to a man open in the right flat. Complete. And the secondary will come up and hit him around the 40 and knock him out. Bobby Rodriguez, a sophomore flanker from Staten Island, New York. Turn and leap to face him. And little George win the corner, and big Mike Jones, the free safety, hit him. But the pass play picked up down to the dogs. 39 is going to be third down and a long yard. Tech leads by 11, and they're trying to drive after the fumble. 
Check up to the line. They flop the tight end over to the left. They're in an eye. Third down, and they only need a yard. The linebackers are in kind of close. Sean Jones points at the backs. Now he splits the backs. And he's back to throw. They rush him, but he throws right across the middle, complete in the 35, and they hit him there. Jerry Gilchrist, the flanker. With third and one, they threw it nine yards, directly over the middle, left to right, sliding in. Al Jackson, the corner, hit him. He's from Pensacola, Florida. Tech's got a first down on the Georgia 30. Jackets want to put this thing out of the way if they can. They struck quickly for 23 points in the second quarter and had a 23-9 lead. It's 23-12 as the Dogs kicked the field goal at the end of the half. Georgia flopping defensive tackle around. Tech splits two wide outs here in a one-back set on the 30. Long count by Sean Jones. Did they take too long? All of a sudden, that's what the flag says. They may have taken too long. This place was sold out. A little over 82,000 paid today. They'll start work on closing in half of the open end of the stadium on Monday. Five-yard penalty on Tech. Back to the 35, 23 to 12. Dwayne Simmons hasn't been able to come back in since he got hurt. Andre Washington playing there. John Allen, the other inside linebacker, playing with a bad knee but still playing. First and 15, Tech into 35. Sean Jones underneath, one running back. He drops back to throw. They rush him and miss him. He throws in a run. It is complete in the 29, and they will hit him and drive him out around the 25. Bobby Rodriguez. Somebody just blew in there. Mitch Davis ran right by him and tried to leap and bat it at the same time, so he squirted inside of him and threw a short pass and got it to the 25 over on the sideline. Second and five, 10.49 to go in the third quarter. Check leading by 11. Tech has Scotton and Bell in an eye with one wide out only. They run a man in motion. And they run the option. They pitch it to Bell. He pushes his blocker. He stops in the corner. Mo Lewis came up and got him. And so did the secondary on the 23. William Bell didn't have any room. Went to the short side of the field. He was pushing his blocker on the play. Brent Goolsby, the, the split end. And the dogs caught up to it, and he only got two yards. Tech is third down and three on the Georgia 23. It's 23 to 12. Third down. Tech up to the line on the dogs 23, and the red people come up. Hollering in support of the dogs defense five-man line Sean Jones bootlegging out right throwing on the run and it'll be rule complete I think to a receiver sliding down on the 11 Rodriguez caught it lying down the dogs up complaining that he trapped the ball But it'll be a first down about 12 yards to the 11 yard line Tech just controlling the thing now and trying to get more points 23 to 12, 9.54. Yeah, the defense was complaining that it skidded into him. And I, three wideouts this time, and Sean Jones hands to Bell, and Bell runs inside the left tackle and drove it down to the 12, got about five yards. He's a big back, and he ran over on the left side where Daryl Jenkins is 280. John Allen, Willie Jennings on the stop. Check 23 to 12 with 9.20 to go. Second and five. Check really knocking on the door. Dogs five. Six men up on the line. Almost seven. Now they pull back. Fake, toss, sweep, bootleg. Sean Jones fires. Touchdown easy to a man wide open in the end zone. James McEnridge, an alternating tight end. There was nobody around him. Big McEnridge just crept in there. There was nobody, I guess, within eight or nine yards on either side of him. And Tech leads 29 to 12. And we've had some people start to file out. 8.56 to go in the third quarter. 
Scott Sisson, kid out of Marietta, sophomore. Paul Bowman holding the ball for Tex. Sisson's extra point is up, and the kick is good. And it's 30 to 12. Tech leading third quarter timeout on the Georgia Bulldog Network. Well, the dogs fumble at their own 48-yard line cost them big. It was on the fifth play of the second half. Tech recovered and then marched it down for the score. The Yellow Jackets going nine plays, 48 yards, and scoring the touchdown. Highlighted by a 12-yard third and short pass, and then capped by that seven-yard Sean Jones TD, his third touchdown pass of the day throwing into the end zone and Tech is suddenly on top 30 to 12 and what happened to the first quarter when Georgia led it 9 to nothing by the way Jones has now completed 10 consecutive passes he started the day only one for five he wasn't sharp early but he is making connections when he has to here again Sean Jones the Tech quarterback has completed 10 in a row three of those have found the end zone 30 to 12. I would imagine Tech will play a little bit loose and deep and probably put some kind of a zone on the top end of that defense when time comes back in, figuring the dogs might try to strike to the guy off the track squad again, Steve Moore. We've twice gone deep down the right side for 50 or 60 yards. We overthrew it once, and then we hit him once, and he dropped it. And then we have hit him once as he curled back in the middle for about 15, 18 yards. Well, it's an 18-point game. Dogs deploying to receive. Final game of the year. Tech trying to stay unbeaten and wondering what the polls are going to do. The important polls will be what happens after the bowl games, of course, on New Year's Day. Dogs, Andre Hastings still trying to play. Unable to cut much, but they finally started using him late in the second quarter. And Hastings and Carswell will be the deep man with Brian Cleveland up in the front of them. Scott Sisson will be kicking off again. 30 to 12, check leading. If they get any more points, there will be a mass exodus out of this one side of the stadium. Long kickoff, angling to the far side. Try to pin uh, Hastings against the sideline to the 15, to the 20, and up to about the 29. And it'll be a first down there. There's almost a little bit of shoving going on after about every other play. And on that kickoff play, I really saw something. Ball number 29, 29 and a half. Vandy 14, Tennessee 7 in the second quarter on the Dixie Crystal Sugar scoreboard. Dupree, the quarterback. Ball close to the 30, up. Looking over the middle, complete to Hummings. They hit him viciously, but a first down on the 44. Dupree, as they slanted a man in, Curly Day, the right corner, hit him. Repeating, Vanderbilt 14, Tennessee 7. Texas was 21 to 14 on Texas A&M in the third. They ought to be in the fourth by now. There it is, 21 to 21 in the fourth, Texas and Texas A&M on the Dixie Crystal Sugar scoreboard. Georgia first down in the 44. Dupree going to run a reverse and swing Chad Wilson wide. 45-50 to the sidelines and out of bounds. Somewhere near the Tech 45 or 6. Where did he step out? And an official got driven out of bounds over there. And he's down flat on the 48-yard line on the Tech bench. The reverse to Chad Wilson coming from the right to the left. Got 11 or 12 yards and a first down on the Tech 45. The official was first knocked way out of bounds before the tackle was made, and the official is down. There is normally one emergency official, an extra official that travels with each crew. I didn't think about that this morning when I had breakfast with them. But they've got a man down. 8.20 to go. It's 30 to 12. And they're now helping the official up. He's hatless. He put his hand to his mouth. I presume he is spitting a little blood. Louis Phillips, ever present with the binoculars, says he hurt his left knee. Louis, he may have hurt more than that. But he is up moving around. It'll be a first down for the dogs when time comes in with the ball in the 45. Texas 21, Texas 
when I get the Texas final, I'll give it to you. I've had Tech people ask me for sure the time of their kickoff, and I believe that the Citrus is 1.30. Slot right for the Dogs. Go to the tail. Hurst straight ahead and fumbled the ball as he shot in there for four yards but had the whistle blown. Let's see. Hurst ran straight in at right guard and got four yards and was bobbling it. In the early minutes of the game today, there was three or four guys dropping it as they got hit. Game was four. It'll be second down about five and a half or so. Dogs on the change at the tight end. 30 to 12. Texas uh, tied to the Texas State end. The official is down again. Yeah, and he's got his hand down by his left knee now. The official just went down again on the far side. Not hit that time. The official's knee suddenly would not hold him up. And so the officials have got a man down again, and he may not be able to continue now. 8.01 to go. Check with an 18-point lead, and both teams are called to their benches to talk with the coaches while the officials lift the member of their official party up. He's trying to walk, and he's a little stiff-legged in that left knee or leg. They may have to take him off. And now they're taking him to a bench behind the Georgia Tech sidelines. Dogs offense has come back out here on the field. It'll be second down, five and a half, almost six with the ball, just shy of the 40. The referee came over, said something to Goff. They want to make sure they got the clock operator right. I don't know which position was carried out, by the way. Georgia, one wide out, two tight ends. We're in an eye. Tech jumps out, but we may have moved. Now there's pushing after the play. Lamont Tellis and a Tech guy shoving long after a penalty. Tech suddenly had jumped offside, but we may have pulled him. I'm guessing that we moved on the right side of the line. Let's see. Motion penalty on the dogs, and that'll wipe out the four and a half tough yards that Hurst had made. So it'll be second down and ten or ten and a half. Tech leading by 18 and seem to be in control of this thing. It's 30 to 12. George up to the line. Again, two tight ends, one wide out. Tech in a six-man front. Dupree coming back to pass. Wanted to run a draw straight ahead, and they just knocked him down five yards behind the line on the 50. Was going to run a quarterback draw. Was cocking his arm. Coleman Rudolph, the left tackle, was the first guy that hit him. But there were others coming up in there. Dogs now will be third and long, back on the 50. 30 to 12, Tech leading by 18. Georgia led nine to nothing. The end of the first quarter had the stadium and their fans really in it. But vastly superior weight numbers and probably talent at some positions also has finally taken its toll. We go to a slot. We put three wide outs. Dupree got in trouble behind the line. They're chasing him back on his 40. He wants to run. They finally get him on around the 48 as he went wide to the right. Calvin Tiggle, a senior linebacker, finally got him. Check a possible penalty. Boy, Dupree at one time was about 12 yards behind the line, trying to run, trying to run a big wide circle to his right. There's a flag down, and let's catch the call here. Tech with an 18-point lead and 6.47 to go in the third quarter. And Dupree got sacked, though he almost got it back to the line. Personal foul. It'll be against Georgia. He never said, but he didn't have to now because they'll mark it off. Dogs take a penalty deep down around their own 33, just inside of it. And the dogs now will be fourth down and about 30 or more. Back on their own 33. And Scott Armstrong will come in to kick. Jason McGill and a single safety for Tech. Tech puts 10 men on the line. They will not rush the kicker this time. And the kick is bad. 
high, short, end over end, and bouncing back toward the 50-yard line. An extremely high, bad, end over end kick. He probably couldn't put any weight on that left foot. And when he swung in to kick it, it didn't work. 18-yard punt. Tech gets the ball in the 50, an excellent field position. And they sense the blood now. Timeout on the Georgia Bulldog Network. When Georgia Tech scored in the opening minutes of the third quarter, they got the ball at the Georgia 48-yard line. They will begin this drive right at midfield at the 50, already up 30-12. to 12. Larry said Georgia Tech is smelling blood, and it appears that way as they'll be on offense once more. Be sure and listen to our post-game wrap-up when we will recognize the Exxon Supreme performer in today's game. Georgia's first two offensive series don't begin well. A fumble and then a punt. A couple of penalties in there well, so Georgia very sketchy offensively. Georgia Tech first down, just barely on their side of the 50. They flip-flop a tight end. They go to the eye. Dogs crawl up into a five-man line. Sean Jones took a long count, and now he's coming back to pass and is going to fire it complete on the Dogs. 33 over to the right side, and they'll knock him down on the 26. Greg Lester on the hash marks across the field and Jones threw a perfect strike for about 24 yards. Mike Jones and George Wynn hit him. Dogs led nine to nothing early in the game. In fact, in the middle of the first quarter. And then Tech's superior whatever started to finally move the ball and come down. They scored just as the second quarter opened. Tech first down. They're on the 26th. They're in an eye with three wide outs. John Jones underneath Jeff Wright now has come in at the tail. He's going to give it to Wright, and Wright veers out to the right side, and the defense stopped him right on the line. Brian Gant, one of the men on the stop. He's a senior. He's out of Athens, Georgia, 6'3", better than 200. It'll be second and 10. Tech leading by 18 points. I still have nothing else on Vandy in Tennessee on the Dixie Crystal Sugar scoreboard. It was 14 to 7 Vandy late in the second quarter. Second down on the 25. Man in motion wide left. Sean Jones fakes, runs wide to the left, throws on the run, and touchdown. He said he dragged his foot in there just as he went out of bounds down on the left side of the end zone. Bobby Rodriguez again. Carswell jumped. He caught it right behind him. And just got one foot down, and just like that, it's 36 to 12. So the lead goes to 24. Now, Tech's been going for two often today. Let's see what they do here. Now they'll go for one. Scott Sisson to try the extra point. It's 36 to 12 with 5.07 to go. They set it down, and the kick is up. The kick is good, and it's 37 to 12. Georgia Tech leading 5:07 in the third quarter. Timeout on the Georgia Bulldog Network. This drive, beginning at the 50-yard line, lasts only one minute, 14 seconds. Three plays and a touchdown. Jones completing the last two, each worth 25 yards. And Sean Jones is on fire. He's now completed 12 in a row. Four of those 12 passes have gone for touchdowns, 37 to 12. The score, Tech well in front. And with seven minutes to go in the Battle of Texas, Texas leads Texas A&M 28 to 21, but still time for an upset there. Texas on to the Cotton Bowl and A&M playing for that upset in Texas. Dave just told you on the Dixie Crystal Sugar scoreboard, seven minutes to go down there. Texas 28-21. Texas A&M, I think, has won six or seven in a row in that series. And Mr. Brock and his Cotton Bowl committee want Texas, frankly, to win it. That's the one they want back in there. Texas is still playing for a, kind of a mythical shot at finishing very high in the ratings, so it would take an awful lot of luck for it to happen. It could happen for them, but they have to win today in order to stay alive to finish in the top one, two, three, or four. 507. If I get anything else on Vandy and Tennessee, I'll give it to you. 37 to 12 here. Tech's gone out by 25. Proving a real superiority thing if you want to look at it because they were down nine to nothing. They were in the other guy's stadium and the crowd was rocking and rolling. 
Bandy and Tennessee 14 to 14 tie and still playing in the second quarter. The first half is not over. Dixie Crystal Sugar scoreboard Bandy and Tennessee 14 14. Scott Sisson kicks deliberately high and short. Cars will caught it on the 19. Shoots back up to the 35 to the 40. Needed a block down the sideline to about the 50 and run out of bounds as he went into tech territory. Scott Sisson who kicked it had to knock him out. George has got a big lineman complaining to official on something that may have happened down around the dog 35. 459 to go in the third quarter. Tech in total command of this thing. Be their 10th win of the year, and it's been many a moon since a Georgia football team has lost seven games. 37 to 12. They need to hit big plays. They need fumbles. They need everything. Dupree going to run an option. Cut into the tackle. Got hit so hard they knocked him backwards two yards. He penetrated to the 45 and then really got racked. Coming in there, Eric Fry, one of the linebackers, one of the men on the stop, Tom Johnson. Outside linebacker, another. Dupree is up, shaken up, and his right shoulder or arm is hanging down a little. His right arm is hanging down. I don't think they've seen it off the bench. Coach Goff wants to call time. It's second and eight on the 45. And the dogs will call time here to see if Dupree can continue. Tech leading by 25 points, 37 to 12. Late third quarter on the Georgia Bulldog Network. Joe Dupree was popped pretty good on his shoulder on that last attempt to run through the middle of the line. He is going to remain in the game, but kind of an interesting decision by Ray Goff. You wonder how much longer he'll leave Dupree in the game. Georgia's offense is very much stagnated, and the Dogs, if they have any hope of climbing back into this thing, do need a throwing quarterback in the game. So you wonder if he'll go with Greg Talley or even the little-used Preston Jones in the last quarter and four and a half minutes or so. We'll see. Dupree stays in, slot right with an eye, second and eight on the Tech 45. Alfonso Ellis wide, emotion left. Dupree comes up, goes to the sideline, threw it low at Hastings' feet, incomplete on the 40. Threw it right down at his shoes, probably a good thing he did. Tech had a pretty good read on the ball and had a chance to come up inside and cause some damage on that pass. He threw it very low, however, at Hastings. It'll be third down. 4.21 to go in the third quarter. Some fans have filed out. It has not, however, been necessarily a mass exodus, but a few thousand have left. 37 to 12. Tech by 25. Dogs run Hurst in motion, then break him out as a receiver. Dupree fires back to the tight end, complete on the 40. And young Mitchell going to fight his way down to about the 26. Crowd thought there was a late hit. Ken Swilling got him. Eric Fry, the linebacker. Mitchell, the tight end, turned around and got on the play about 15, 18 yards and a first down, almost 19. Lauren, what do you got? Well, you got excitement when plays like that happen. It means the team hasn't given up, but it also is, it means uh, an opportunity to say that we got some players that can really have out in the future. Dupree lining them up. Toss sweep to Hurst who cut in and crossed the 25 only to the 23. Jarrell Williams who's made a whole bunch of tackles. Inside linebacker hit him. The game was about three and a half. Pause 10 seconds station identification here on the Georgia Bulldog Network. <laughs> Skycopter Skyplane Traffic, only on AM750 WSB Atlanta. Depend on it. Ball on the Georgia Tech 23. Dogs knock on the door. Second down and seven. Dupree back. They're rushing him. He doesn't see it, and they blitz him and knock him down in the 31. Tom Johnson from Huntsville, Alabama. 6'5", 239 pounds. Blindsided him. Dupree slow to come up on the 31, and they may have to take him out now. Trainer Orrin Morris has come out. Loss on the play of about four. It'll be second and 14. 3.17 to go in the third quarter. Well, he's taking some wax today, oh, Larry. He really has. He's taken a couple of shots on this drive alone. He took one over the back earlier. I'd be really surprised if he could continue a lot longer with some of these. Now Dupree does come off under his own power. He never saw the guy coming. Nobody picked him up over on the left side. So Greg Talley is in the junior quarterback from Valosta. One back set with three wideouts. Dogs a third and long. Talley steps back, and he's got a man open down the middle. Touchdown! Talley 
hit Andre Hastings. Alfonso Ellis does a little dance, but they need a lot more of those. 37 to 18. Callie just called off and threw a 32 yarder. And now it's a 19 point game. Threw a good strike, and the receiver, Hastings, had to turn around and catch it over his other shoulder, which made it twice as tough. Dixie Crystal Sugar scoreboard, Texas 28, Texas A&M 27 with four minutes to go. Dogs are going to go for two. It's 37 to 18. We run a man in motion one way, and then he turn him back to the other, and we run a toss sweep, and Max Strong goes in and gets two. Ran a toss sweep over where the flanker Maxwell was and where the young tight end Mitchell was blocking. And Max Strong untouched shot in for the two-pointer, and it's 37 to 20. Georgia cuts it to 17. 3-0-1 to go in the third quarter. Now it's a 17-point game. We may have time called here. I believe we will. For the thousandth time, timeout on the Georgia Bulldog Network. Now you and I, Munson, are in the wrong business for all these television timeouts. They must be making a bundle. <laughs> 37 to 20, the score. Georgia has climbed right back in it on the 31-yard bomb from the new quarterback, Greg Talley. We go down to the field and Lawrence Smith. Lauren? Well, it looks like uh, Joe Dupree has a bruised right shoulder, and I uh, don't know whether he'll be able to go back or not. They've taken his shoulder pads off, checking it out. Uh, Andre Hastings came off the field limping uh, badly after that touchdown catch, so he's not full speed, but I think you probably agree, Dave, and I'm sure Larry does too, that he's better with a leg and a half than most guys are with two. An outstanding young player, an outstanding effort catching that touchdown pass. Yeah, he was wide open and looking back over his left shoulder, and the ball was thrown over his right shoulder, and he had a turn and twist around. He caught it and then fell down because of the momentum of his twist and running and trying to change strides. Well, it's 37 to 20. Dogs have cut it to 17. Trying to take a bigger shot here if they can. 301. Tech's got Jason McGill as the deep man. Georgia will be kicking off. It's now a 17-point game. We're feeding the dogs led 9 to nothing into the first quarter. All right, Casey will kick off. Deck is a man on the five. Two men flanked across in the 12. Casey kicks. Beautiful, high and deep. McGill catches it running on the five. Goes across the field at the 10 to the 15. Gets over the 25 to the 29. And Tech will line up first down there. It's 37 to 20. Travis Jones was one of the guys on the stop. And Brian Cleveland off the special teams. Tech first down. Ball game trying to turn out into be a shootout. Which would satisfy the crowd. A few thousand kind of left angry. When Tech ran it out there as they did by 25. Tech slots left. They're in an eye. Right and Lawson are the running backs. They run the slot man in motion. John Jones gives to the tail, and they got a hole in the middle, and Jeff Wright just shot it up to almost the first down. He got about eight, eight and a half. Ralph Thompson, substitute freshman, strong safety on that stop. Ball up on the 37. He got nine. It'll be second and one. 37 to 20. Georgia Tech leads by 17. Check up to the line, second and one. They slot left. 5-2 defense. Sean Jones, hands of the full, straight ahead. Now with Jeff Wright the tail, and he may have the first down up on the 39. Dwayne Simmons, a man that stopped him, up on the 39, but the play moved about two and a half at a first down. Ball very close to the 40. Wright started out and turned and cut back in. Georgia Tech's longest drive was actually a two-play drive for 74 yards. A run and a bomb. Now they're on their 39 and a half. Toss sweep to Lawson. He turns and cuts in with a man hanging onto his shoe and got four yards. George Wynn, the cornerback. One of the little corners. 5'8", 160 something out of Atlanta. And the other free safety, Chris Wilson, is 5'8", 170 something out of Macon. They make a lot of tackles. 
Ball on the 44. Got four yards, second and six. Tech with a big 17-point lead late in the third quarter. Split a man right and two man left. George is in a 5-2. Sean Jones needing six yards. Going to take it. And goes to the tail who starts in and they hit him on a 47. Jeff Wright leaning in. Bernard Williams, young freshman tackle, hanging on to his shoe from behind. And Mitch Davis, the linebacker, hit him from the side. Deck's going to be about third and three. And we're into the final minute of the third quarter. Tech on their own 47. Starting to drive this thing. It's 37 to 20. Stadium roaring. They want the defense to hold. They want to get the ball back. So Sean Jones is back to pass. And he fired. It is incomplete. Went wide to the sideline. Jennifer Greg Lester. He was hit just as he threw. Somebody blitzed across. Mo Lewis was the guy that did it. Boy, are we going to miss him. It'll be fourth and three. He's a senior. And Tech in a punting situation. The drive is sputtered near midfield. The clock's is 38 seconds in the third quarter. Tech leading by 17, 37 to 20. Scott Aldrich to punt. We don't rush the punter. And he kicks a beautiful, long cannon. Fair catch way down around the 8 or 9 yard line. High, long spiral. 45 yards net dead to the Georgia 9. If the dogs are going to drive, they'll have to go a long way. There's a final. Texas beat Texas A&M 28 to 27. Texas beat the Aggies. That is a vicious rivalry, by the way. 28-27. Dixie Crystal Sugar scoreboard with the other first final of the day. Dogs in their own nine. 17 points down. Tally the quarterback. Split two men. Got an eye. So Tech loads up the line to six men. Tally steps inside the pocket. Fires. Complete to Larry Ware around the 13. The tailback who hooked across the line. And they got on the play about four. It'll be second and six. Tally really got knocked down after the play. Seconds are running out here in the third quarter. Dogs have got 20 points, and they got to get up to 40. It's 37 to 20. And they may not get a playoff. Hastings came out and brought the play in from the bench, but the quarter is about to end. Tech leads by 17 at the end of the third quarter. Timeout on the Georgia Bulldog Network couple thousand Georgia fans, mainly Georgia fans, one would think, have left the game. That was about midway through the third quarter when Tech bumped the lead up to 25 points and seemed to be on their way to a really big round. But Georgia came right back with a touchdown pass. Greg Talley into the game, tossed one 31 yards to Hastings, who was playing on the bad ankle. And now, after point, uh, forcing Georgia Tech to punt, Georgia has back. Got a long way to go. It's second and six on their own 13, but... A touchdown here makes it a 10-point game and still plenty of time remaining, 15 minutes up on that clock. On Monday, big day in the life of this stadium as over 4,000 new seats will be added to the open end of this stadium, the one right in front of the bridge. And Vince Dooley, Georgia Athletic Director, on right before the game, very pleased that about 42, 4,500 new seats will be added there, pushing the attendance at a... Sanford Stadium game to about 86,000 for next year. There are more seats going to be added within the next oh, 10 years or so. Feasibility study underway to determine how many more they can get in here. Eventually you'll probably see 100,000 seats in this stadium. Right now just over 82,000 and they were all filled when we started today. Dogs on our own 14, second and six. We start the fourth quarter. Now they need 17 points and they have to have flawless things happen to them. Tally underneath, split two men, one left and one right. He's got the backs in an eye, Tex in a 4-3. Maxwell in motion, toss sweep to Larry Ware, cutting outside the right tackle, pushing blockers out over the 20 to the 23 and a first down. Flag down, though, let's see what we got. Kevin Battle and Osgar chasing the play across Ken Swilling to free safety, hitting him. Going to have a penalty on the dogs, I believe. And Georgia just lost themselves a nine-yard play and a first down. 37 to 20, Tech leading. We just started the fourth quarter. Young Shannon Mitchell coming back in at a tight end. Cummings coming in, Maxwell and Moore coming out. 
Dogs going to take a tough penalty here. It had been second down and six. And now the 10-yard holding penalty brings it back down. They set it all the way back down on the seven. Georgia's warming up a walk-on punter named Saucy because Scott Armstrong cannot go anymore. Dogs with an eye on two tight ends, and they run the fullback in motion. And Tally fakes and bootlegs right. He's got a man chasing him. He fires at the tight end. Mitchell complete. And a first down on the 21 or two. Tally bootleg right. He had a man blitzing behind him. Coming after him, but he whipped it out and got 14, 15 yards in a first down. Keith Holmes, a cornerback. Knocked Shannon Mitchell down. Dogs get a first down just outside the 21. They put in another receiver. They take the other tight end, Broom, out. Chris Broom, one of the few seniors who will be leaving. Georgia get a first down between the 21 and the 22. I slot. Tally going to hand it off to the tail. And Larry Ware to the 30, to the 35, out to the 40. A sudden quick hitter by Larry Ware, the junior from Montgomery, Alabama. And he got about 18 yards. Chris Simmons, an outside linebacker, and Keith Holmes, a corner, hit him. It's 37 to 20. There was a sudden hole, and Larry Ware shot in there. First down on the 40. Dogs have punched it out away from what had been their nine. They have now grounded out to the 40. Slot, four-man defensive line. And he's going to pass to the left flank, incomplete, down the left sideline to Kevin Maxwell, and Tally took a pretty good lick again. Marco Coleman was really coming at him. And it'll be second down, and with the ball right at the 40, 13.48 to go. I have nothing else on Vandy and Tennessee. They are probably now, well, they ought to be at the half. They could be in the third quarter. Second down in the 40. Maxwell right, Hummings left, Moore left. Tex in a 4-4. Tally on second down. Tex linebackers threatening to blitz. Tally takes a long count with it then. And then hands, and we run a trap, and Alfonso Ellis breaks out over the 45 to 50 and gets to the Tech 49 with a first down. Senior Alfonso Ellis, 5'9", 217, built like two bowling balls. Willie Clay got him the corner, Calvin Tiggle the linebacker. Dogs get a first down. That's the second good run of the day for Alfonso Ellis in his final game of his career and enjoying himself. First down, dogs on the Tech 49 and driving. Three wide outs, one back set. Tally straightens and fires complete to the Tech 40 to Maxwell. Um, or is it Hastings? It's Hastings. Where are they going to mark it? 38 and a half. Take of the linebacker hit him and Willie Clay the corner hit him. They're going to have to measure. It's close. It's an inch or two inside the 39. It may not be enough over. Dixie Crystal Sugar scoreboard. Bandy 17, Tennessee 14 at the half. And Vanderbilt giving them fits they generally do at the end of the year. Lauren, what do you got? Well, you can see Hastings is uh, still limping, Larry. He's an outstanding football player. He uh, gets big plays, makes uh, his catch, even when he's hobbling along. So uh, he sort of tries to uh, conserve his uh, energy a little bit. He limps around between plays, so he gets the job done. But it's amazing that he can do it. It also makes you wonder how effective he'd be if he were really full speed. A little over 13 minutes. Missed the first down by five inches. Second down, half a yard. Tally going to run a fake reverse to Maxwell, and he's going to throw it down the middle, and it is dropped by Hummings after being deflected on the three-yard line. They had triple coverage catching up right at the end as Hummings hooked back. May not have led him enough, but Hummings curling back to his left, got both hands on it, but Holmes or Swilling were tipping the ball just enough. I'm going to try and turn around and look at it on the replay if we can get a look and see who touched it. It was barely touched, and when it was, it went right into Hummings' hands. Third down, inches, eye slot. Tech figures we're going to bang it in. They go to a 5-3, so we go to Ware at right guard on the first down. They got about a yard, and that's all. Larry Ware slanted in to get a first down. We got under 13 minutes now. They're 17 points down. Dogs want to get on the scoreboard. That'll bring the stadium back to life. It's a 17-point game. 
They're giving Tech a pretty good shot. Though it was tough looking a little while ago. It was 37 to 12 and nothing was going right. First down. They've driven to the Tech 38 on a long drive. Slot left. Tally in trouble but going to throw down the right sideline. Incomplete. Interference. You could see it. They shoved the intended receiver going down the right sideline. Tech Tech man bumped him. It was Max Strong, the fullback. Got shoved out of bounds down in the vicinity of the 28. Marco Coleman, the outside linebacker, and Thomas Balkum, the strong safety, blitzed in and really hit Tally. He is really taking some licks. Dog's going to make a change of the tail. Ware got knocked down, and Frank Harvey has come in. It's the freshman played very little this year. He's out of Dawson, Georgia, a big back. Dogs get a first down on the interference penalty. In vicinity right now, it's on the Tech 28, the official holding the ball. Bobby Ross is upset over there. At the end of the third quarter, Tech had 350 yards net. Georgia had 197. Dogs come up to the line to hold Only one blocker, and they hit him there a yard behind the line. Try to get him to the short side. Two men came up for one blocker. Jarrell Williams, again, I repeat, he's made a whole bunch of tackles. He's a junior. Orangeburg, South Carolina. Loss of two on the play. Ball back close to the 30, second and 12. Dogs are 17 down. They've come all the way to the Tech 30. Hummings to the left and Maxwell to the right. One back set, which is Max Strong. Got three wideouts. Tech's in a five as Tally drops back. Right over the line, complete to the tight end. Who broke a tackle? Flag down, I think. Mitchell all the way in the corner. Knee at the ground on the one. Shannon Mitchell with a flag on the play. Face mask on Georgia, they say. They're going to take it. Dogs would have been goal to go on a one and a half, and another penalty will yank them back. Shannon Mitchell caught the ball, twisted, broke away from two hard hits, and took it to the one and a half. But the dogs had already had a penalty flag fly on them. They could really have cut the margin. The sign given was a face mask, which may have meant that an offensive lineman was hanging on to some guy that way. 11.52, that hurt. They were about to cut this thing down to 10 points. Face mask on the offense. The flag flew before the run was complete. There can be no doubt the official thought he saw something. Shannon Mitchell caught it shy of a first down and bounced off two different people and went all the way down to near the two. The officials now are talking about the call. In fact, now all six of them are there. It was second and 12 on the 30. Tally quickly straightened up with a one-man blitz on him and hit the tight end. For some reason, they have delayed stepping it off. I don't know why. 15-yard penalty, Georgia. No, they decide they'll go 20. They have stepped off now 17 and a half yards from the previous line of scrimmage, which was the 30. So apparently the face mask was in the vicinity of the 32-yard line. Penalty all the way back out to the 47. Dogs are second down a mile and a half. And they break three men out. A one-back set. 37 to 20. Tally stops, looks, throws over Humming's head. And the defensive back came up and just killed the receiver right in front of the Georgia bench. Georgia coaches complaining bitterly. Willie Clay came up and caught a receiver turning, looking up toward the ball. It was sailing out over the bench. And Hummings really got hit, and the crowd thought it was a little dirty. Third and long, 37 to 20. Boy, it looked like that that corner man for Tech had no idea and no feel for where the football was. He was just going to plant Hummings regardless, but there was no flag on it. Dogs a third down, way back on the Tech 47. Have to go down to the 18 for a first down. Three wideouts and Tally back again. Steps up inside the pocket, going to run 50, 45, 40, 35. Slides on the ground on the 31. Tally got about 16 yards or so. Not enough. Going to be fourth down and about 13 on the 31-yard line. They might go for three. 
It's 37 to 20. Check. Dogs not quitting. They come up to the line. Bohannon going to hold in case you're going to try one. He's going to try for 49 yards this time. He kicked a 50 yarder earlier. And another one shorter. They set it down, and the kick is reaching toward the bars. Good. Casey stuck it in there, and it's 37 to 23. And they've cut the gap to 14 with 11, 10, 47 14 point to go. game and 10, 47. And we have again another extremely long television timeout. There have been some extra ones today. 14 points, 10-47. It certainly is not impossible. In the NFL, they might score 38 in the 10-47. Dogs will kick off 37-23. Check at a 25-point lead, and all of a sudden, life stirred between these old hedges. Casey will kick off. Jason McGill, the deep man for Check. Casey's kick, long, booming ball deep in the end zone, way back through the end zone on one bounce. And Tech will bring it out on the 20 now, wanting a long drive. They've got a solid 14-point lead and repeating on the Dixie Crystal Sugar scoreboard. Vandy is three ahead of Tennessee at the half. They should be in the third by now. And Texas beat Texas A&M 28-27. I don't have anything else on Georgia Southern and Idaho. Georgia Southern had an 11-point lead at the half. That was a long time ago. Tech's going to put Bell and Scott and the two starting running backs back in. Bell is a very good back. Nick Bestwick and I were talking at the half. He said he thought Bell was a very good back. Not brilliant, but really smart runner. Cut well and followed that blocker. Really follows that fullback. Bootlegging right. Sean Moore going to throw a pass to a tight end. Complete. And the corner up to dump him upside down to the 30. George Wayne came up. And knocked big Anthony Rice, 6'5", 227 pounds, upside down, but he got 10 and a half and a first down. Tech's got a 14-point lead. Casey has cut the gap a little again. Georgia led 9 to nothing at the end of the first quarter, though Tech had by that time taken control and they were driving. Tech splits two backs. They slot left. We're in a 5-2. They run a trap, and Bell comes breaking out wide to the left. And got hit around the 35. Let's see where they marked him. Somebody rolled his feet up. Mike Jones, a sophomore free safety, did. It'll be second and five on the 35. Pause 10 seconds for station identification. Atlanta's leader for news, weather, and traffic. AM 750 WSB Atlanta. Depend on it. Georgia Tech second down, five on their own 35. Dogs rotate their defense as Tech puts a man in motion. Fake. Sean Moore going to run a sprint draw up the middle. The 35, the 40, the 45, and a first down. He got 10. He faked and almost pumped it. And then he sprinted ahead. Watch a possible penalty here. Mitch Davis, a linebacker, hit him. Penalty going to be on Georgia. 9.38 to go. It's 37 to 23. Penalty discussion out there. Dogs retreating, expecting another penalty. This cost them a possible touchdown a couple minutes ago on one. And the television replay, by the way, you Christian spotted it, showed a member of our offensive line rustling a guy down on the ground by his face mask, and an official had caught it. There are some feelings in this game down on the grass. Ball on the 50, first down, check. Bell and Scotton backs a split fake. And goes to Bell, and he got back to the corner only. No gain. Sean Moore came bootlegging right and given it to Bell. Mike Steele played it very well, and Bell got it back to just about the line of scrimmage. And Big Jennings was over there helping him, Steele. And it's going to be second and ten. Final, Georgia Southern beat Idaho 28 to 27 to stay alive in the playoffs on the Dixie Crystal Sugar scoreboard. Tech second down. Ball right on the 50. 
They run a man in motion. Moore going to give it to Bell. He jumps back in the middle and goes seven yards down to the 43. Had a hole at right tackle. Mike Jones, the safety, had to come up. Jennings was tugging on his leg from behind. And so is Dwayne Simmons. Tech's going to be third down in the Georgia 43. At the moment, they are controlling the clock and the yardage and are moving. They've got a 14-point lead. They want more on the board. They break Gilchrist out to one side. Merchant out to the other. And in a slot is Lester. Sean Moore, third and three. Gives it to the tail, and Bell runs rough shot, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven yards, and a first down to the 31. Just pounding his legs and breaking tackles. And there's a little shoving and arguing after the play near the 30-yard line. It's all right. Been a lot of that today. Deck got a big first down, and they're coming down the field now to knock on the door, and they are controlling the clock if you're thinking about an impossible miracle comeback. Dave, they got it to the middle of the quarter now. Yep, and they're using Bell almost exclusively. He's got over 120 yards rushing on the day. Tech in an eye, two wide outs. They go to Bell again. He cuts back in the middle, and the red shirts knock him down. No gain. They lined it up on the 32 and got nothing. Willie Jennings, one of the first men that hit him. Dixie Crystal Sugar scoreboard. Alabama 7, Auburn nothing in the middle of the first quarter. Second down, 10, Tech. They lead by 14. They got seven minutes to hang on to that lead. This particular lead might be comfortable, but Tech wants more. They're in an eye. They got the fullback up pretty close. George in a 5-2. Sean Moore takes his time, runs an option, follows a fullback, goes outside at left tackle to 38. Mo Lewis hit him there. His slant left where he had room. He ran behind Scott in the fullback. He got three to the 29. Big third down here. But the clock now has got it under seven minutes. I have nothing else on Bandy in Tennessee. Dogs take Big Mike Steele out of the defensive line. Tech is third and seven on the Georgia 29. The sun has finally come back out. I they got three wide outs. Sean Moore sprinting to the right, wants to throw. Now he fires, and it is complete. They hit him around the 21. It might be a first down. The dogs don't like the spot. They thought that it would be up around the 23. Jerry Gilchrist, they'll give him a first down inside the 21-yard line. They got on a play about eight and a half or so. First down outside the 20. Check up to the line, 6.04. It's 37 to 23. Split the backs. Now they run a man in motion wide left. And they run a halfback draw, and Bell goes to the 15. He got about six yards. William Bell. Dwayne Simmons hit him, the linebacker. Ralph Thompson, the strong safety, hit him. Tech knocking on the door, but controlling the clock and lots of yardage with a long, steady, time-consuming drive here. Young Bernard Williams in, and they take Eric Coney out. They've got Steele back in the dog defensive line. Tech is second and four on the Georgia 15. The clock and everything running in their favor. It's 37 to 23. Georgia got way behind. They would not quit, and they cut the gap, but now Tech is down there. Toss sweep to Bell with blocking close to the 10, close to a first down. He ran at right tackle. Mitch Davis had to hit him. He's made a lot of stops today himself. Ball very close to the 10 with a market. It might be another first down. The clock stopped 5 2 Officials are looking across the way. We'll probably stop the clock here and measure it. Be the dog's seventh loss of the year unless something funny happens. Something funny happening would be a fumble bobbled up in midair and then a long bomb after that or something. But the fumble would have to be a touchdown. Crowd just got a reaction that Alabama was leading Auburn. Idaho 27, Georgia Center 28. 
First down checked by half a football, and the nose of the football is touching the 10. First down, check on the dog 10. Georgia Southern deserves a lot of credit. Complete change of coaches almost, and lost some talent and people from last year, and here they are again. Tech slots two left and one right. They're in an eye. They're on the dog 10. Bell running straight ahead, pushing close to the five. Boy, they get a shove off the middle behind Chubbs and Siffrey and Laban in there. Willie Jennings being helped up by teammate Mitch Davis. Big Mike Mooney, the right tackle, is 6'7", 316 pounds. Play was four yards to the six at second down. The clock running down. Long minutes and long yards here. Tech slot left and an eye. Sean Jones underneath. They're on a slot man back in motion. Going to run a toss sweep to Bell, and Bell pulls a tackler down to the four, slanting outside their right tackle. Mitch Davis got him. Davis just making tackle after tackle, like Jarrell Williams, an inside linebacker for Tech, has done today. Tech will be third down in the four, and the clock now is at 3.54 and running. Tech has held this ball here for about six and a half minutes or longer, and they're still driving. It's 37 to 23. They're on a play in from the bench to Bobby Rodriguez. They have thrown very well down here close to the goal line, though they haven't had to throw this close. With a 14-point lead, the Yellow Jackets come up to the line. They got two tight ends, only one flanker, and they bring him in motion. And Sean Jones bootlegs right, stops, wants to run, and got tackled on the five by Mitch Davis again, the freshman linebacker. You think he's not going to be something before he gets out of school? Davis got him, lost a couple of yards back to the five. It'll be fourth down, and Tech will go for a field goal. It's 37 to 23 with 3.05 and the clock running. Ball on the five and a half. Scott Sisson, the sophomore kicker out of Marietta. He has saved them a couple times this year. Scott Aldrich, the punter, will hold it on the 13th. The kick is up, and the field goal is good, and Tech leads 40 to 23. 241. Well, Tech will bring it out and kick off. 241 to go. As Dave mentioned, they control the thing for eight minutes. Tennessee 21, Bandy 17 early in the third quarter. Tennessee took the kickoff and just drove it the length of the field on the Dixie Crystal Sugar scoreboard, and they got a four-point lead. Scott Sisson will kick off for Tech. It's a 17-point game. They had a 25-point lead when suddenly Georgia went to work and cut it. Carswell and Wilson are deep for the dogs to save whatever Hastings has left as a receiver. Kickoff coming. Wilson on the 8-yard line to the 15, to the 20, puts his head down and drives it to the 32-yard line. It'll be first down, dogs on their own 32 with 234 to go. They're 17 down. Tally will be the quarterback again. Tech gonna finish 10-0-1. Dogs will finish four and seven. Steve Moore, kid from Cartersville, just came in with a play off the bench. They hit him with a long bomb that he couldn't hang on to earlier in the game. Here comes Tally going back. Fires to Hummings, complete in the 41. He broke off one man, and then the man came back, and another corner came up. They pulled him down in the 44. Keith Holmes, a senior corner, got him for Birmingham, Alabama. Jarrell Williams, inside linebacker, who dropped him. He spun around, then came back and helped hit him. First down, dogs trying to hurry up. Officials have to move the chains. First down in the 44. Tally hit Hummings. Moore cleared that side out, and he hit the receiver behind him. Tally steps back, throws to Hummings, who steps out of bounds on a 50. A little six-yarder. 2.18 to go. Dogs are 17 down. It's 40 to 23. Dogs have really tried to make a comeback. 
Ron Maxwell out. Change of receiver in there. Georgia sitting on the 50. Jack Swan still playing with that broken wrist. Wilson and Moore are the wideouts. We've actually got a slot man also. Tally coming back. Tally going down the middle, overthrew everybody. Moore was breaking across the 32. He threw it 10 yards behind him. Tally wound up on the ground. Georgia quarterbacks have had a tough day getting knocked down. Brian Cleveland going to come in at the full. Maxwell comes back in there. Ball on the 53rd down. 40 to 23 with 2.12 to go. Dogs would like to keep the drive alive. Fans have been filing out very thick and steady here the last five, six minutes or so now. Tally drops back, needs four yards. Looks, going to get sacked. Somebody came off a blocker on the Georgia 43. It was Marco Coleman, the outside linebacker, who's done that a lot this year. A loss of about seven. It'll now become fourth and 11. Lauren, what do you got? Well, I don't know what the decision is. Greg Talley immediately called timeout. His fourth down. Scott Armstrong cannot find. He's got a, a big guy. He's back on his left knee. Bandaged up. I guess Stuart Saucy will do the kicking. Stuart is from Waycross, Georgia. If uh, Georgia punts. But it looks like they may be trying to gamble here. Fourth and 11. Talley went to the bench. Brian Bohannon came in. He's a holder on kicks, by the way. And also a reserve flanker. Georgia will be on the 43, 4th and 11. They tried to hurry up a television timeout, but television isn't going to allow that. 40 to 23. Tech was ready to drop into a four-man defensive front. Georgia wanted to snap the ball with the one-back set being Brian Cleveland. But the ball is still paralyzed. It's 40 to 23. And the two teams will probably drop back in huddles once again. You got any total yardage or anything near it, uh, Dave? Well, Tech is well over 300 yards, obviously, on the day about 375 yards. And they've really kept it on the ground almost exclusively in the fourth quarter to eat up the clock. And Bell is up over about 140 yards rushing. He's had the big day running it for Georgia Tech. Georgia's rally, the Tech answered with an eight-minute drive and stuck a field goal in there. So it's a 17-point game. Georgia in the 43, Dupree got hurt. And by the way, when they stripped down his upper body, they finally put a sling on that right shoulder and then gave him his T-shirt back. The punter Armstrong got hurt on a roughing the kicker thing. It didn't hurt the kicking leg. He hurt the opposite knee where he has where he cannot put his weight. He tried one punt after that and didn't get a good one. Dogs break up to the line on the 43. Fourth and 11. It's 40 to 23. Georgia has two timeouts left. Tally back. Going to fire down the middle. Nobody there. Intercepted by Tech on their own. 35 and breaking off. Running is Ken Swilling down the sideline and they knock him out in the Georgia 41 or two. The receiver tried to turn around and wrestle him. Couldn't pull him down. Swelling finally broke away from him and went another 10 or 15 minutes. They wound up jammed up on the Georgia bench. There's no trouble, but for a moment, somebody wanted to push. Is there a flag? Late flag just dropped in the play. We may have. Let's see what we got. A minute and 54 to go. It's 40 to 23. Officials are now discussing. What are they going to do? Any way you look at it, it'll be Tex Ball. May have a dead ball foul coming after the play. Tech fans are roaring as Ken Swilling comes off the field. A big fine junior, 6'3", 236. Personal foul on Tech, they're saying, on the first call. So let's catch the call now and see what they do. They'll probably just penalize them and set them back where they're going to start their offense again anyway. Tech by 17 in less than two minutes. Official again stops and faces the stands and gives the same sign. And now they'll bring the ball down to the Georgia Tech 42 or 43. 
And it'll be text ball there. Dogs have got a couple timeouts left. They can stop the clock. But again, they're 17 down. Jeff Howard, text number two quarterback, a sophomore out of Rex, Georgia, will now be the quarterback. 6'2", 180. Jeff Howard, the quarterback. Three wideouts. They are in an eye. He's going to give to the tail, and they run Jeff Wright straight ahead and drive him all the way to the dogs, 46. They had been first and long. The officials jump in every play wherever they think somebody is mouthing at each other. Tech had lined up on the 43 on first and long, and now they're going to be second down and about 14 on the Georgia 46. He takes 10th win of the year, and I have one tie. Three wideouts. Lawson and Wright are the running backs. Howard late in the game. Five-man defensive front gives to the tail, and Wright goes driving at right guard and pushes it down to about the 40. About six more yards or so. There's a little mouthing again, and again, the officials step in between people. Been a lot of that today, especially in the first quarter. Ball to the 41. Tech will be third down in about eight there. 52 seconds in the clock running. Tech's got a 17-point win. And they're running as many as possible second-teamers in here. They break two men left and one right, and they split the backs. Quarterback, Jeff Howard, going to take it and run a draw with Wright. He had a hole, and the hole closed. They hit him on a 35. Six yards for Jeff Wright. He's out of Smyrna, Georgia, 6 one 2 11. And they've been eating up the clock and the time, and the seconds are going now. Ball on the 36-yard line. Going to be fourth and five. But Tech probably is not going to let a play run. Tech players are starting to come off the bench with the coaches. And this ball game is going to end right here. Georgia Tech a winner. 40 to 23. The Jackets have won it by 17. Dave O'Brien will be back with you after these words on the Georgia.